as I mentioned, can't stop, won't stop. Hello friends, my name is Emily, I'm the Bi, and here are some books off of my bookshelf. So today I thought I would talk about five authors whose books I have a lot of. Like I have a lot of their backlist on my bookshelf or that are still with my mom, but I just keep buying these five authors backlist. Some of them don't really have very large backlists, but I still felt a very deep compulsion to buy most of their backlist. Despite the fact that I know that I'm not gonna like a chunk of it or what have you for various reasons, and yet I still own them. So let's talk about the five authors whose books I just can't stop buying. It is a sad fact that all five of these authors are men and that they are all white, but only one of them is straight, so there's that. I am nothing if not at least one of three parts very consistent. So the first author, I own almost the entirety of his backlist. I own the whole of like a set of his backlist because he basically has six books total. His first book and his last book I don't own, but I do own the middle four because I'm gonna talk about Thomas Harris for a little bit. Thomas Harris is the creator of Hannibal Lecter. I did an episode of Emily and Megan are Fandom Laureates, the podcast that I had with Megan. I will link it down below on Hannibal Lecter in general as like a media figure, specifically wanting to kind of talk about Hannibal, the NBC show created by Brian Fuller, whatever. So I did some general research, but I have kind of been obsessed with Hannibal Lecter since not Silence of the Lambs because I was literally born the year that movie came out and didn't see it until Oh god, maybe six years ago? It's not, it's not been that long. But the first Hannibal Lecter movie I ever saw was Hannibal Rising. And I bought this trade paperback at like a grocery store and I've never read it, but I was obsessed with it. One of my favorite French actors, Gaspard Julier, played young Hannibal and I became kind of obsessed with it, but clearly not that obsessed because I didn't do anything with that obsession until the Hannibal NBC show created by Brian Fuller came out and Hi, now I'm here. I literally watched that show and I hadn't even seen Silence of the Lambs yet, I think. Wild. So I ended up buying Red Dragon, which is the only Hannibal Lecter book I've actually read, and I really fucking love this book. I think it is beautifully written and I have lots of pieces highlighted, although it is highlighted a long time ago, so I need to go back through and like re-highlight that stuff. But this is one of my favorite books ever. Maybe. And I know for a fact that I will like Silence of the Lambs, which is the second book, and this one is the one that's about Clarice. This one is about Will Graham and is the basis for the first season of Hannibal on NBC. But I also know that Hannibal and Hannibal Rising are bad? Question mark? People don't like these. And I have a feeling that the reason that I haven't continued to read any of Thomas Harris's books, including the one I think I will like, is because these are so bad. And also the one that I think people hate the most, which is Hannibal, is way chunkier than all the other books. So what's interesting about Thomas Harris's books is that he has made basically an entire career out of writing about one serial killer or about people who are chasing serial killers and have to go talk to this one serial killer and then he escapes in Hannibal and then Hannibal Rising is about the creation of this serial killer who is a cannibal. However, he has also written two other books, one called Black Sunday, which I'm kind of interested in, maybe, I don't know. And then he actually pretty recently released another book that is not a Hannibal Lecter book. And I don't know that I have any interest in those. The next author I'm gonna talk about is Chuck Palnook. So I became obsessed with Chuck Palnook in high school keeping it classic. I basically was obsessed with the film of Fight Club because my favorite director, or one of my favorite directors, David Fincher, directed it. And so my best friend in high school, Jordan, was like, well, you should read the book. And I was like, I guess, if you insist. She let me borrow her copy and I thought that I wasn't gonna like it and then I did like it and then I just didn't stop buying Chuck Palnick books. <laughs> I don't know. I own a bunch of them. I don't own all of his entire backlist because Jesus, he's written so many books, but I do own most of them. And in fact, it was one of those things that I used to go to my favorite used bookstore in Asheville, Mr. K's, and just like be like, what Chuck Palno books do they have that I don't own yet? And that's how I got most of actually like most of my books in general, but I still really like Chuck Palnook. And in fact, one of the books I want to read this year is Snuff because I have been reading ever since I was in high school and like buying his books and then slowly 
ever so slowly reading them. I started doing a thing because I read Fight Club first where it was like, okay, I'm just gonna read them in publication order which is a wild thing to say. But I also understand my brain process for it because even though it wasn't the order he wrote them in necessarily, especially at the beginning, because the first book he actually wrote was Invisible Monsters. And then you can tell that this was a short story and then like he expanded it, like you can tell. I don't know, it just made sense to me. And I'm doing the same thing with one of the other authors I'm gonna talk about, which, <sighs> Yeah. But yeah, Chuck Palahniuk. I am still slowly making my way through his books. I'm still doing it in publication order, baby. <laughs> okay, so the next author I want to talk about is not a person that I like. <laughs> so I don't, I don't even remember how this happened. Like, I don't know how I became obsessed with this author's writing, but he sucks. Like, as a human, he sucks big. Like, I cannot express the ways in which I do not like Brett Easton Ellis, but fuck, I do love his writing. So like, I don't know what to do with that. This is Less Than Zero. This is one of three copies I own of Less Than Zero. And I have only read two of Brett Easton Ellis's books, but unless he's actually, oh fuck, did he write another book? Let's find out together. Ooh, he might've written another book recently. I feel like the last one he wrote was Imperial Bedrooms which is a sequel to Less Than Zero. Nope, not filmography, I don't care about that. He wrote a nonfiction book called White, which given Brett and Ellis, I can't imagine it's good and I don't want that. So I own all of his like fiction. My favorite Brett and Ellis book is actually Rules of Attraction, which I don't have here, it's with my mom. It's also my favorite adaptation of any of his books. Sure, yell and scream at me about American Psycho. That's a good movie. But also think about this, Rules of Attraction is better. I also think it's a more accurate adaptation and it gives a good vibe of like what it feels like to read Rules of Attraction. <laughs> which wild. I just really fucking love Rules of Attraction. I think it is a really fucking good movie. I think that one of the things that kind of made me obsessed with Bress and Illis as a whole and like his writing oeuvre is that it's all a connected universe. And I don't know if I've talked about this, but that is a surefire way to make me extremely interested in things, especially if I am already interested in like the first book or even the second book, so Rules of Attraction was the second one. Setting it all in the same universe Man, that's interesting. So like one of the main characters in Rules of Attraction is Patrick Bateman's brother. But in stuff like Lunar Park, where I think Brass and Ellis is one of the main characters, yikes, which is probably why I haven't gotten to it yet. But people start dying in the suburb that he lives in and uh, who is also there? Patrick Bateman. <laughs> Wild, cool. The next person I'm gonna talk about is someone who is my favorite young adult author. I have read a good chunk of his books, though not all of the books that I own and not all of the books that like he has in his backlist because he's also a person who writes I think almost a book a year and I love him and I need to read more of the books I own of his and I need to get the rest of his backlist and that's David Levithan. David Levithan is absolutely one of my favorite authors of all time in general. He has a couple of really important books to me. One of my favorite books that I kind of want to turn into a mini series at some point, and I don't know if that's just like a fever pipe dream, is The Realm of Possibility, which I don't have with me, a sad fact. But I have a bunch of David Levithan books, either standalone or books that end up not being standalone, that I just haven't read yet. Like Every Day is one of the books I just haven't read yet. I really need to get to them. But I just can't stop buying David Levithan books as proven by my last book haul where I bought a selection of David Levithan short stories because I saw that Book Outlet had a book by David Levithan that I didn't own already and I needed to own it even if I'm not caught up reading all of his books I already own. He is my favorite and I cannot stop. And then the last author that I'm going to talk about today is the one that I haven't read any books by, but I do own six, I think, of his books. What's up with that? And that man is Michael Shaven. So I'm holding up The Amazing Adventures of Cavalier and Clay because it is my best friend Megan's favorite book and because I think that when I do read a Michael Shaben book for the first time, it might as well be this one. But it is kind of chonky and the font is very small, so it's been a bit intimidating. And I know that I will love this book so much 
I just can't. I just haven't. I just, it's not that I can't. I just haven't gotten there. I will say that the first Michael Chabon book I actually bought was Wonder Boys because I saw the movie and became instantly obsessed with it. I actually only saw this movie because in high school I was going through a very deep, deep Robert Downey Jr. phase where I was watching a bunch of his movies and he happens to be in Wonder Boys being queer as hell with Tobey Maguire. It's a very interesting cast. And so I bought Wonder Boys at Mr. K's in Asheville because I thought that I would want to read it and I do want to read it, but I never did. And then at some point, The Amazing Adventures of Cavalier and Clay became a thing that I became aware of. And so I bought a copy of that. And then I met Megan and <laughs> I just kind of always had Michael Shaben in my peripheral as somebody that I knew I would love and that I think I still will love very, very much. And yet, I just haven't gotten there. He's the only author that I've talked about today that I haven't read any books by, but I think of all the authors, even maybe more than David Levithan, he might end up being my favorite of these five, but like, God, David Levithan is so good. Like, wow can't believe. Sometimes I think about the fact that I met David Levithan and I'm like, wow, I can't believe that happened. And it was like random. Just on a whim, I was like walking around Asheville with my boyfriend at the time and we both loved books. So I was like, let's go into Malprops because we were walking around downtown. And we walk in and my friend Stephanie is sitting up at the front doing a book event that I somehow didn't know about for my true love gave to me, which is a collection of short stories she edited that David Levithan also contributed to because he's friends with her. And then he's also just sitting there because he's there for the event for My True Love Gave to Me, but then also had just had a book come out. So he was there because of that and because of Stephanie. And then I ended up meeting him. So that was wild. He was extremely nice. Very cool. But sometimes I just think about that and it's just like such a wild happenstance that we just went into the bookstore that day and I didn't know anything about the event, which I think was actually kind of a last minute event, which is why I didn't know anything about it, but completely wild. Life is so weird sometimes, guys.